changes no plans Welcome to Leaders Full Pads. My name's Kirsty. And I'm Phil. Today, you join us as we run through our initial thoughts and setup of Neoville. This one here. Yep. It's this... made by Phil Walker Harding and published by Blue Orange Games. So you can imagine it's going to be pretty, it's going to be bright, it's going to be colourful. It's going to be thinky. It's going to be thinky, it's going to be puzzly. Uh, it's also going to be sort of uh, cutesy, yeah, like world eco -y themed, and this Ooh. is about building an eco city on your map. Yes. Um, so Neoville is a wonderful little game of building eco skyscrapers, which I'm not entirely sure are actually a thing, but they could be a thing. <laughs> they could be, you never know. Um, so yes, Neoville. It's um, yeah. We'll uh, we'll go through our initial thoughts, but we'll do our setup first. So if you want to join us down on the table, you're more than welcome there. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can put the rule book over that side. Look, I mean, that, seriously, this is like a, a a weighty tome. There is so much in here that just needs to be discussed. Um, even the fact that it's in like 18 However, languages. I was actually, say, it's in one language that you, you need to worry about. That's, that's it. That's the English language version Woo, there. And there's so many pretty pictures. And it's there great. are plenty of pretty pictures. So let's start by setting up a two-player game because there are two mm -hmm. of us. So we're going to start a two-player game. And to do that, we first pull things out of the box. So we get the box. Uh. <gasps> wow. And my skyscrapers have fallen out. My skyscrapers have fallen over. Yes, 3D armor. Um some some assembly is required when when setting up Neoville. So we're gonna start by Chris is gonna give these tiles a shuffle. And these tiles are gonna be played um as a standard part throughout the game. Each player is gonna be starting with one of these four tiles depending on their turn order. So we're going to get rid of three and four for the purposes of today and we will select our one and two tiles a little bit later on. I think now, you'll be the first player. Okay, we have now selected out. that. <laughs> so Chris is going to shuffle the tiles and then she's going to deal two face down to each of us and then we're going to create a little uh, draw, draw sort of uh, area here with four face up tiles and a stack of and because of the stack of tiles, because they are massive stack of tiles, we are going to probably split it into multiple stacks. One, <clears throat> two, three, four. There we go. Let's put these here, like so. So what we have is um, a stack of tiles and these draw tiles just here, so let's make sure they're in shot. Those draw tiles here. So we'll be able to, on our turn, take from here or draw blind off one of these decks. Uh, the other thing we're gonna do is take out the four different styles of skyscrapers and place them in a place that is easily accessible to all players. And in a two player game, we're gonna remove the seven and the five numbered skyscrapers. So I'm gonna put the forest skyscrapers over here by Kirsty. So beautiful. And I'm gonna put the Stone skyscrapers over here. Hopefully you can see those. They range from four through to twelve. The and water ones over here. Two. You can see which of us um, is like most OCD about getting things in order. I don't know what you're talking about. Uh, then we're going to do the Parkland ones just there, like so. Beautiful. Um, yep. <laughs> which side of this board do you prefer? <laughs> And then we are going to choose, um, there are actually three different types of these. These are um, our utilities. We're going to choose two utilities and we're going to only choose for any game, no, no matter the player count, but in a two player game, you're going to choose five of each utility. So we've got windmills and biodomes um, for the sake of today's game. So we're going to take those five out and we're going to divide them up so that we can see them quite clearly. So here are my windmills over this side. And Beautiful little biodomes. Looks like they're growing fruit and veg. And these. selling fruit and veg on the nice. outside. Yeah, that's no, like cute. That. Um, and they've got a tree growing out in the middle of them, which is you know great for architectural purposes. Yeah. Um, and that's it. We are we are kind of set up. So let's talk a little bit about how the game plays.
Oh. Start in hand, sorry, my mistake. I did ask her to deal two one. to each player. Two. One. Two. That, that was definitely yours, yeah, not mine. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so. Ooh. <clears throat> anyway. <laughs> so, um, the way Nirvan works is on your turn, you're going to be placing a tile from your hand onto your tableau. Your tableau becomes a 4x4 grid and is a 4x4 grid, so you can't redistribute those tiles in a different format. You can rotate a tile anyway when you're placing it, and once it's placed in your 4x4 grid, it is locked in and cannot be reorientated. So, well, however you place it is going to matter. After you've placed a tile, you're then going to be able to place either a skyscraper, a utility, or nothing at all. And <laughs> You've fired for me before, haven't you? <laughs> yep. And... <laughs> and then draw a tile to replace a tile you've played from either the face-up draw pile, normal, or blind from one of these, not quite so normal. <clears throat> really? Yeah, that okay. feels better now. <laughs> so, let's talk about how you're gonna score points in Neoville. So, when you're placing skyscrapers on your board, they must match the terrain type that they associate with. So, the trees are gonna go on the green spaces, the little, um, Mud houses. mud houses, mud towers are going to go on the mud spaces. These ones are stone and they're going to go on stone tiles, um, of which I have one there because it has a more visible one there. there. And stone. these are water houses and they will go on a water tile. So that's pretty straightforward. Yeah. When you place one of these, you place it, let's start with one that actually can legitimately go somewhere. If I place this on, if I, this is in my grid here and I place this 12 tower here, I am committing to, by the end of the game, having 12 connected, orthologically, so not diagonally, 12 connected pieces of mud, which match the value at the top of this skyscraper. And if I do that, 12 or better, I will score 12 harmony points for this skyscraper. If this skyscraper is not in an area, a, a sector of the town that is, has 12, if it has less than 12, I will score minus 12 harmony points for this one. Out. Yeah, and so uh, Kirsty's completed this water one, four water spaces and a four water tower there. That works. Mm -hmm. um, so how many points are going to come from skyscrapers? And at the end of the game, as long as they're in a district where the skyscraper matches or exceeds the number on the skyscraper, or the tile, sorry, the squares exceed or equal the number on the skyscraper, you'll score positive points. If it's less, you'll score negative points. <laughs> Boo. Yeah. We don't like well, negative points. Yeah, and what, we'll talk about it in, uh, in, in our thoughts, but it's a really interesting mechanism, an interesting way of setting the game up. Um, then you've also got utilities. <clears throat> so the biodomes are really straightforward. They have a shape. You need to match the shape in a district. So the only problem with the biodomes is they restrict your district size. For example, this biodome requires, uh, this biodome is escaping. This biodome requires a straight line three but oh. no more than three. Actually, this biodome <laughs> requires a little corner, which this green one is now a corner. This biodome that required three in a straight line, if it was placed in here, no longer matches, no. that would be minus five points for this little guy. And this little fella would be five points because it sat in its own little area oh. quite nicely. So that's, that's the biodomes. They're very simple, straightforward, and you just match the shape on there to the shape you're placing it on. And if you don't match the shape for any reason, go larger than the shape, smaller than the shape, the shape isn't the same shape, minus points. Windmills. Windmills tell you where you must place them in your four by four matrix. <clears throat> so this particular windmill needs to go along the bottom row of my four by four grid. It can occupy any of those squares and that will gain me four points. If it's not on the bottom spaces of my four by four grid, it will score me minus, minus four. four points. So that's how windmill score. Mm -hmm. The third utility you have are called uh, uh, eco, eco cars. cars. And eco cars um, are cute. They are cute. They and, look like little bubble cars. And they basically, uh, they travel up and down a column, up and down a row and across a column. Mm -hmm. And you're basically matching objects in the row and column that they're occupied in. For example, they'll want to see maybe three parks along their journeys or um, Four leisure skyscrapers. activity areas or a certain number of skyscrapers. And then that brings us neatly to the last points in the game. There are parks in the game, uh, which have got a little tree symbol in white. And there are also 
um, sports areas in the game which have got this little um, running person and those areas the person with the majority in each of those at the end of the game is going to score five extra points um, plus if you've got some of the eco vehicles uh, eco cars they're going to be worth points as well that we haven't is, got those out this time no we haven't got those out we've got windmills and biodomes because you only choose two of the three utilities um, so that is the fundamentals of how you play Neoville. It is a really simple game to play. Now, Kirsty, what mm -hmm. are your thoughts? Okay, so I was very, very lucky that I managed to get Neoville for Christmas. Thanks, Mum and Dad. Good find. Um, so this is one that was on my Essen list that I really wanted to pick up when we were at Essen, but unfortunately it wasn't available to purchase there. Um, in fact, it wasn't even available to play there. So I'm not quite sure what happened, but we did pick up Explorers. We did. Uh, but Neoville, in my opinion, is <clears throat> definitely worth the wait. The uh, artwork is really pretty. It, you know, the theme is really, is really well thought out. Like you've got a water tile, you need to play some water orientated, but you want to put points with that. So actually, the points re are reflected obviously on the item that you place. But it's logical that you can only build certain types on the certain areas. Yeah. So I really like the way that the theme flows in this game. It flows with the water. Oh, no, so like that. Sorry, I apologise. Um, it's it's feels to start off with like. Oh, it's easy, match the blue with the blue, the green with the green, the brown with the brown. Oh, oh I'm telling you, I'm telling you, this, we'll do a play for a minute. And <laughs> it's a half hour game if Kirsty's running good. It is, it is. <laughs> but it's one of those that you know that if you place a tile in a slightly wrong position, it's like, oh, that could really mess me around and it could mean that I can't then score that. It's a, It's such a fantastically thinky game i i love the way it seems so simple but yet it just gets my mind ticking over and yes it's very simple for some but it, i think it's the way that my brain is built i find little bits like this a little bit tricky like i can play really heavy games and it's a doddle you know coffee traders you know i don't know um edge of darkness absolute breeze no i don't have any problems whatsoever imperial steam no problem whatsoever I find them really easy put a game like this in front of me it's puzzly it's complicated i need to figure out a couple of moves ahead and it's just like you can actually see the steam going and my brain you moving you actually can <laughs> but i enjoy it i love it and yeah i find it a really therapeutic process building and okay. um, it's puzzle, puzzle building in a way it with is. the different with the different um like cascade-esque when you're creating all the different little areas it's just yeah. you know numbers so yeah i love this game i love the way that my it makes my mind work i can see it wouldn't be for everyone but i really really enjoy it and it was definitely worth the wait as far as i'm concerned phil what do you think okay so <clears throat> I, I, I love photosynthesis by Blue Orange Games, and I love it because it's cutesy but cutthroat. And this has some of the similar vibes to that. It's a very different game, and uh, don't expect it to be photosynthesis. It's not, it's a very different game. However, what's great about this game, um, why you should buy it, or reasons why you should buy it, um, first and foremost, there is a, a wonderful kind of risk reward thing going on in your head. Um, like, you got you've got these areas that are building on your map and it's like okay so maybe I can get to 12 maybe I'll take 12 now but actually you're looking at what the other players are doing again but if I don't take 12 soon what if someone else takes yeah. 12 and I'm missing out on points uh, and then I, boom and then you're done and then you're like what have I done what have I done <laughs> and it's that kind of risk reward thing if you like that kind of um, it's, it's a gamble a, it is a gamble and it's one of those where it, it, when you initially look at this game, it feels like there's so little player interaction. And there's not a huge amount of player interaction, but what is there is strictly meaningful and, and actually really critical to how the game plays. So the biggest chunk of player interaction is going to be taking these pieces and placing them on your player boards mm -hmm. as your player board area grows. And the number of times I've gone, oh, right, can you just pass me the number six tree? And kirsty has gone, nope, it's on my board, or the other way around. <laughs> and it's that kind of like, oh, why did I wait? 
I thought I was going to be able to do it. I should have mm -hmm. taken it straight away. You can place one of these every time you place a tile. You don't have to place them on the tile you place. You can place them anywhere on your ever-growing districts. Mm -hmm. um, the only rule on placement really is that um, you can't put um, skyscrapers or you well, you can't put skyscrapers onto parks or sports centres, and you can't put um, skyscrapers in the same district as another skyscraper. But you can create multiple districts of water, for example. That's fine. So you couldn't put. Um, for example, this four here connecting to, I don't know, say that this was going to be a six here, that would not be allowed. No, it would not. That six would be fine, and a four over here being built separately is fine, as long as they never connect. There you go. Um, so it's a real, there's a real sort of timing challenge, mm. and the interaction with the utilities can be quite e interesting. The eco, eco cars are fantastic. They force you to think a little bit outside the box about how you're going to connect things up. And it's a game that looks cute, plays very simply, because it's basically place a tile, place a thing on a tile, um, and that's all you're doing on your turn pretty much. But the fact that this 12 pointer here can actually be minus 12 points at the end of the game if I've not got 12 bits of mud associated to it, mm. it, it means you don't want to take it, but you absolutely do want to take it. And the question is, when am I going to take it? And that makes the game absolutely fascinating. Now, yeah. it's not a complex game, it's not a complicated game, but it does make you think, it does make you wonder how your grid is going to grow. Yeah. If you like something like um, uh, a King Domino, but you want something more, yeah. much more complex, much more um, like cutthroat. Yeah. It's similar in the way that it's like the 4x4 four four grid. Yeah. It's the same as that. Like, po like positioning, we haven't actually discussed positioning. You have to put two by two. You cannot go like that. Yeah. You can't do. I don't know how you put. Yeah, you got like that. They have to connect fully. flat on. Yeah. So it's a it's a really nice little game. Um, it's it's, and it's one that once you taught it, people can play it quite happily. Mm. It's not like painfully difficult. Or if you watch Kirsty play, sometimes you'll wonder um, <laughs> because it's it, like you sometimes. <laughs> it, it's the it's the way my mind works. Um, but actually, or doesn't. If you like a really thinky, puzzly game that's yes. got this really risk and reward element mm -hmm. and other players can really disrupt your process because they've mm -hmm. taken what you want and you're, this is a great game for you. It's a really good game for a group of people who like yeah. that. Um, so I, you know, I can highly recommend it. It has, its, it has its faults. There are some things wrong with it. Like the number of, there's a couple of times when Kirsty's gone, oh, can you pass me the four mud? And I've gone, no, it's on your player board. And she's like, no, it's not. And I'm like, da, da, da. yeah, it is, there it is. Um, and that kind of thing can happen because although this 3D mm. element is really pretty and nice, especially to watch it grow, it can hide the things that are behind it. And you sometimes you need to just kind of like, yeah, you learn have to, to move around as you play. Yeah, it's you quite get a fluid move. game. It's a fluid like game. Like this, you have to just all, flow. All hippie and flowy. Yeah. Um, so yes, it's a good game. Um, it has some faults, but it is fundamentally a good game and uh, yeah, available to buy. So Definitely. that's a that's a good shout. Um, we our first copy, our Christmas present, or Kirsty's Christmas yes. gift, um, came slightly misprinted. And when I say slightly misprinted, about a third of all of these tiles were so far off you couldn't play with them. It was, really it was really sad. We played a few games, but it became too frustrating to continue. Mm -hmm. However, um, in the UK, Coral Spring Games, who are supporting the game, um, came to our rescue and got a replacement copy to us within a week. So it's thank really you, good. thank you, Coral Spring Games, for that. That's absolutely fantastic customer service. Yeah. And um, we can now sit back and enjoy Neoville. Yes. So, if you like this video, please, please like and subscribe. Please subscribe. It's important to us and makes us feel special. We're also on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Just search for Leader School Press. Thanks for your time today. Thanks, everyone. Bye See bye. you soon.